Can you hear me? All right. Hopefully we're on the air and you can hear me and everything's going good. Sorry about all the technical difficulties. Things are changing. The internet's weird. I can't help it. But we are going to talk about Braves baseball tonight. But before we do, as always, this video is sponsored by Lorandi Gloves. Of course, I can't put their graphic on the screen. But I can show you this right here. This is the best thing I can show you. This is a glove they sent me. It is the best thing out there, guys. I promise. Go check these guys out. 18 different colors to choose from. You can mix and match. You can put your name on it. You can do whatever you want to do with your own glove. I promise. Go check them out. It'll be worth it. The link is in the description below. So let's move on. Let's talk about some Braves baseball. Got some, you know, some pretty interesting things to get through today. Uh, first off, we got to talk about some of these roster cuts, right? We're going to talk about that in a little bit. That's going to be the probably most of our show. If you, if you missed it, uh, I would check out the video I just dropped a few minutes ago. Uh, it was very good video talking, really focusing in on the bench. Uh, something that I can't really do in a live, just really nailing in on one topic. So we did that there. You can go check it out. We released it today. Check it out after we get done here. Uh, but first, we're going to start out with some headlines. If you didn't know already, the Atlanta Braves already renewed Ian Anderson's contract. According to John Heyman, it's 575000 in the majors and, of course, around one twenty three in the minors. So what do I think about this? I think it shouldn't have much attention, honestly, and it doesn't necessarily, but there are some people speaking on it, and there's some talk around MLB about the Braves being cheap, and I don't care. They're always talking about the Braves being cheap. They talked about it when Ozzy Albies came through and got his deal, seven, eight million a year. They talked about it with Acuna and his deal. Keep in mind it's a hundred million dollars, but regardless, it's cheap. They there's always a lot of talk about the Braves being cheap. So I think at the end of the day, both sides came to agreement, and that's the end of it. There shouldn't be they should pay him more or whatever. If both sides agreed to it, it was obviously good enough for both sides. So, you know, not everyone can have a huge deal all at the same time. You have to allocate money. And all respect to Ian Anderson. I think he's a great talent. I think he's a great pitcher. I think he's going to be great. With that said, he has 32 innings pitched in the majors right now. He's not necessarily a proven commodity yet. Do I think he's proven? Do I think he's going to be just fine? Yes. Do I think he's proven in terms of I want to put all my eggs in one basket? Absolutely not. So he's not Mike Soroka yet. And even Mike Soroka went out for a full season. So I just don't know that I would want to put everything into him quite yet. So a lot of it isn't his fault. It's not his fault that he doesn't have a lot of games under his belt in the minors. It's not his fault that he doesn't have a lot of games under his belt or a full season under his belt in the major leagues. But you can't blame the Braves for wanting to save every penny, especially due to the fact that the uncertainty of COVID right now. And I just don't blame him. We all know right now that the Braves are rumored to be broke. I don't know if that's necessarily true or not. But regardless, if they are or if they need to save money, hey, Ian Anderson's still young. You got to pay your guys like Ronald Acuna, Ozzy Albies. Maybe you want to get a free agent later on in the year. I don't know exactly, but you can't blame the Braves for wanting to save money right now. And, you know, they get they, they got the All-Star game this year, right? They're expecting to be at full capacity. By the way, don't know if you know, they already released the fact, I told you that Derek Schiller would, they released the fact that on opening day they plan to have 33% attendance. That is a very big deal. That You know, I know it doesn't sound great, but, you know, it's 33%, and it'll it'll hopefully gradually go up as the year goes on possibly being full capacity by the all-star game. That would be really good for Atlanta. That would be a big revenue. Obviously that'd be, you know, attendance revenue. And frankly, the all-star game is a tourist attraction. So you bring in a lot of people, you bring in a lot of money. So that would be a very good thing for the Braves. So hopefully that's the case. And hopefully we can get back to full capacity, but something we got to talk about in terms of on the field, Ronald Acuna, don't know if you guys have noticed this, but Ronald Acuna is raking at the moment. And that is obviously a very good thing. And, I when I typed my notes up today, it was this morning, and I said that he had two homers so far in spring training. That is not true anymore. Ronald Acuna has three homers, and a lot of people are already hinting at an MVP. Slow down. As much as I'd love Acuna to win the MVP, his home runs of spring training mean nothing in relation to the MVP. What it does mean is that he's hitting his groove, and that's a very good thing early on. It's a nice thing to see. Of course, he you know, finished last year, kind of hurt. So it's a good thing to see that he's already good to go. I'll tell you this. I was in attendance for that first home run. It sounded good. It looked good, obviously. You all saw the clip on Twitter. 
it sounded, it was loud. It caught everybody in the stadium's attention. Uh, but it wasn't, you know, just keep in mind, it wasn't long ago that a lot of you guys were worried about how lean he looked. He looked a little skinnier than he was last year. You were worried about his power. Now you're obviously not. So I was never worried about that. I thought he'd be the same player that we're accustomed to seeing. But I think Acuna will have another impressive year, and there is no reason to expect him to be, you know, not to expect him to be better than he was before. But to expect an MVP, I would slow down just a little bit. Uh, I think he's got all the potential in the world to win the MVP one day. I don't know if he's going to do it this year, but I think he could do it any given year. But I don't think expecting one this year is is, is fair. Uh, I, I think that's a bit unfair, and it's a lot of pressure put on. Now, granted, Acuna is a guy that likes pressure, but there is a lot of great talent in Major League Baseball. There's a lot of great talent on the Braves alone. Uh, there's a number of guys that can win the MVP on the Braves. Freddie Freeman, who won it last year, could go back-to-back in theory. So – with that said, do I think Ronald Acuna can win the MVP? Sure, I've always thought he could. So I just don't think it's going to be because of spring training is what I'm getting at. So it's going to be because of his talent, not because of what we've seen over two weeks, but because of what we've seen over two and three years. So that is what it is. I think it's great that he's doing very well. I hope that continues throughout spring training, but I kind of hope he gets bored in spring training. I want him to be bored and ready to move into the regular season. So I think that will happen here pretty soon. Regardless, though, the Braves' offenses look pretty good, including today. I think they have a 5-1 and one win today over the uh, Twins. So their offenses look good. We're going to talk about kind of what I've noticed. First off, uh, Adrianza just coming out of nowhere and walking it off the other day. Yeah, that's right. Adrianza hit a three-run homer in the ninth inning to walk it off in spring training. He wasn't alone, but he did walk it off. Jason Kipnis would hit a two-run bomb early on in the fifth of that game. Acuna would follow with a solo shot. That was his second homer so far in spring training. And then they did it again. This was crazy. Shea Langoliers went yard, and then Sean Kazmar in the third inning homered again. So the Rays were fighting back. They were down 7-5, to five, but then Adrianza got hold of one in a three-run bomb to walk it off. So I know say, I say spring training game scores don't matter, and they don't. Don't take me the wrong way. I'm not saying, oh, my gosh, yes, they won this game. But seeing a power showcase like that is kind of fun, first of all. But it's also a very good thing to see because if, if the Braves are going to be successful this year, it's going to rely on that offense because we all know what a shredder it was in 60 games. That offense has got to be consistent. I'm not saying as powerful as it was in 60 games, but it's got to be somewhat consistent throughout 162 for them to be successful. So it's a very good thing to see. Obviously, we don't want all home runs, but a three-run homer obviously shows you there were some base hits sprung out through there as well. It's a good thing to see out of out of the young players, too. Adrianza, I mentioned, Langoliers, Sean Kazmar coming out of nowhere. We're going to talk about him a little later on. I, I really think that that's a very good thing to see out of the young players. I, I sort of glossed over Langoliers there, but you know, to see that many young players showing up in spring training, it's a very good thing to see. Now, granted, who knows what kind of pitching they were facing, but uh, you know, it's a very good thing to see. But those guys are all competing for a bench spot. And speaking of the bench, the Braves made the roster cuts. And you knew that was coming at some point, right? No surprises here. 43 players remaining in camp at the moment. 34 of those are on the 40-man roster currently. Six players were optioned to AAA, and 18 were sent to minor league camp. Those six players moved to AAA are Victor Arano, Tucker Davidson, Jaseel De La Cruz, Kyle Muller, Chad Zabaka, and Patrick Weigel. Notice those are all pitchers. Uh, they're, every last one of them are pitchers. you got to think they could be used in some form or fashion. They're going to get those AAA reps. There is no minor leagues for about a month, so in theory they're there for depth alone. Uh, they'll compete in the minor leagues in about a month, and uh, hopefully they'll be ready to go. Hopefully they'll get some innings. Kyle Muller, specifically Tucker Davidson, specifically, and Patrick Weigel are three guys that we've all sort of known were coming up at some point. So it'll be interesting to see. The 18 that were sent to minor league camp, which is – Basically, I don't know if you guys know what minor league camp is, but I can tell you from my experience, minor league camp is still spring training. It's just outside the big stadium and in a little stadium. That's the best way I can put it. It's like a baseball field just on the side. So it's basically still spring training. Those guys are Bryce Ball, C.J. Alexander, Braden Shoemake, catcher Logan Brown, Drew Waters, that's a big one, Justin Dean, Michael Harris, Trey Harris, Grace Bell Hernandez, Kurt Hochstra, Connor Johnstone, Nolan Kingdom, Philip Pfeiffer, Freddie Tarnick, Victor Vodnik, 
William Woods, and Thomas Burroughs. Now, the headliners there are obviously Drew Waters, Trey Harris, Michael Harris, who's had a pretty good spring training so far, Braden Shoemake, and Bryce Ball. But there's no one on that list that I would say is, you know, you're questioning why they're there. You know, nobody's expecting Drew Waters to start on opening day is basically what I'm saying. I don't think it's anything surprising, and first cuts rarely are, but I think it's notable that only one catcher was moved. I uh, wish I could show you the B-roll, but the B-roll I got from spring training, you had Logan Brown, William Contreras, Alex Jackson, Shay Langoliers all working in the same group. And it was pretty interesting to see because that's not even your starter. Those are the guys that are competing for the backup job. And the only catcher that was moved was Logan Brown. We, we all sort of know that William Contreras, Alex Jackson, and Shay Langoliers are in the conversation. I think you're more so going to look at Contreras and Jackson in terms of the catching depth. But that doesn't get a lot of attention. Usually it seems like the Rays would be scrambling to find a backup catcher after Tyler Flowers left last year. That is not the case. The fact of the matter is, give credit where it's due to Alex Anthopoulos and the Braves organization. They believe in this young core of catchers. One of them is going to get a shot. Maybe some of them are going to get a shot this year, as they should. There's too much talent there and too many players to not believe in those guys. I'm all for it. Now, William Contreras has been a guy that's been in the back of my mind for some years now. Saw him a few years back at spring training. He actually was catching Ian Anderson in minor league camp, nonetheless. So there was a lot of hype on him early on. I never really spoke on it necessarily, but I really think he and Langoliers are the future. And to be honest with you, when Contreras was brought up last year, I was very excited. Uh, he's already had his MLB debut. That's why I think he could potentially start on opening – or not start on opening day, but be on the roster on opening day. I think it's a matter of time before you see him in the majors. But that's just one part of the bench. We're going to talk about the others in a second, but – to elaborate on that for a second, you also got to think that, you know, if, if Contreras is the guy we're going to believe in moving forward, right? The minors don't start for a month. And of course you would like another year of control, but him going to the alternative training site, how well is that really going to do for him? I'd much rather him be working with Darno, working with Sal Fasano and getting some major league experience under those guys. If that's the guy we're going to have faith in, don't buy time with Alex Jackson. If we're just going to go to William Contreras anyway. That's the way I feel about it at the moment. I do think it's a matter of time before we see him in the majors, but that's what I think there. So let's talk about the other parts of the bench. And, you know, after the roster cuts, there are only a few guys left in spring training. Those guys are Johan Camargo, Jake Lamb, Abraham Almani, Pablo Sandoval, Jason Kipnis, Adrianza, Guillermo Heredia, Ender Enciarte, who is on the injured list, and Sean Kazmar. And we did a deep dive. I already mentioned it, but I'm going to mention it again. We did a deep dive on the bench. We talked about each and every one of the guys I just mentioned. Again, Johan Camargo, Jake Lamb, Abraham Almani, Pablo Sandoval, Jason Kipnis, Adrian Zick, Guillermo Heredia, Ender Enciarte, and Sean Kazmar. We did a deep dive on each of those guys. We told you who thought was going to be who we thought was going to be on the opening day roster, who we thought could come up midseason, who we thought is solely there for depth alone, and probably not going to see the bright of day. Go check that video out after this video. I promise it's worth your time. It's about 10 minutes. It's worth your time. While I'm at this position, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, like this video, guys. Do me a favor. Get it out to Braves fans. Trying to get as much of a base as I can get before the regular season and as much of a base as we can get before we hopefully move to a postseason. So go ahead and like this video. It really helps me out. Of course, share this video. Tell your friends about it. If you're new here, if you've never seen my face before, subscribe to this channel. It's the best thing you can do. If you're not new here, the best thing that you can probably do is turn on the bell for notifications. I promise it's worth the time. Again, this video is sponsored by Lorandi Gloves. You can check them out. Their link is in the description, www.lorandigloves. They sent me this awesome glove, and they're actually, I would consider them a friend of mine. Lorandi over there, Lou Lorandi over there has been very good to me in terms of just you know being supportive. He's always been very supportive. And look, how could you not be supportive of this kind of glove? I mean, it's just, first off, it's a very attractive glove, but look, it's High quality leather, I promise, and all of their stuff is high quality. Go check them out. Best bang for your buck. Normal gloves like this are 450, 500, kind of. 250 right now, I promise. Go check them out. Their prices, you can't beat them. If you got a kid in the little league, if you got a kid in little league, if you got a kid in high school, it doesn't matter. Go check them out. I promise it's worth your time. Again, they're their uh, link is in the description below. So we're going to talk about some other things. I am going to go through the chat in a few minutes. I promise uh, we are going to talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. Uh, 
All right, Seth, you want to talk about if the DH is there, Pache called and Harris next in line. A lot of hype about Harris. Uh, I, I don't necessarily – I really like Michael Harris. You know, oddly enough, the guy he's been working with is Marquise Grissom. That's who pushed him. That's who's made him successful in a lot of ways. A lot of push because of Michael Harris's success. There's a lot of push for Marquise Grissom to be hired as a boot camp instructor. I'm not against that at all. Uh, you know, at all. So we'll see. Uh, I don't know if he's ready quite yet, just purely due to age and purely due to lack of space. Uh, if, if there's a DH, I leave Pache uh, in the field and I put either Harris or another outfielder in left uh, and make Ozuna the DH. So that that's the, um, I just, at the end of the day, I really don't think that, uh, I really don't think Harris is next in line. I think he's a couple years away. He's not even estimated to arrive until 2023. So it's it's going to be a while before we see him. Um, let me see. Uh, Mab Mab, do you think the rumors are true that the Braves would only sign Shane Green if he were to accept around $1 million? Then that's even less than we pay Tomlin. Green has to be worth more. Of course he's worth more. That's why he hasn't been signed yet. Uh, I don't think the Braves are going to fork out the cash for Shane Green. I, I think they've accepted the fact that their bullpen is what it is. If he'll take one million, we'd love to have him. But if not, then we're not going to take him. Um I just at the end of the day, we'll see. Um personally I, I think he I think Shane Green would be a great addition. I think he'd be a fundamental addition. We saw Chris Martin today. He came in at one inning pitched seven pitches <laughs> and, and he completed the inning. Uh so in terms of right handed pitching in the bullpen, Chris Martin's your guy. But we do need some more, and Shane Green would be a great piece to add. But I'm not going to sit on it and say that this is exactly what they need to do and this is exactly how much they need to pay him. Alex Anthopoulos obviously knows the Braves' mon monetary situation better than I do. But I think he is worth more. I think you'll see him sign at some point for someone for more money than $1 million, unless he just decides, you know what, we're going to go compete for a World Series again this year in Atlanta. So we'll see. Uh, but, yeah, I agree with you. Is Lorandi better than Rawlings? You know what? You're giving him a free plug. But, yes, I would say Lorandi's better than Rawlings. Look, guys, it's the same glove. It's the same quality glove as the big timers out there. It is just $200 cheaper. I promise. Go check them out. They're pretty good. Lorandi gloves in the link in the description below. Mad Mab, you're correcting me. I don't appreciate that. I'm just kidding. Uh, did you know that Ender Enciarte is not injured? He played yesterday and went one for two of the runs scored. Even with his injury, his offensive production has been better than Pache this spring. Well, yes, I, I see that. The only thing is, even if Ender was to start opening day, and I'm not against Ender starting opening day. If it means that we get a, another year of control on Pache, I'm not exactly against it. I just think over time you're going to see him wind up on the bench, and I think that's perfectly fine. I don't know how his numbers line up on the bench necessarily, but uh, when I made that – the video y'all are talking about when I recorded that, it was actually yesterday. It was before the game yesterday, so forgive me there. But, yeah, the I really think that Ender could start. I just don't think he's going to last in center field. Pache's been groomed for that position, and, you know, you're paying – the only thing with Ender is the reason I think he's going to have a bench spot. His offensive numbers in spring training don't matter to me. They just don't. We went through them through that uh, piece I did today. The offensive numbers don't matter to me in spring training. Because you don't know. Here's the difference, right? Ozuna is getting a lot of attention right now. We're going to talk about him. If he's over his last 13 before today. I'm not worried about Ozuna. There's a reason for that. Ozuna is facing the starters. You know, I don't know that Ender is necessarily facing a lot of these starters. You know, Tyler Glass now is pitching when I went. Shut everybody down. These minor league guys aren't necessarily facing that level talent. They're facing their level talent in a lot of aspects. So, as much as spring training is kind of up in the air, you don't really know what numbers mean. And I'm not, and not to mention, it's a super small sample size. Ender before today had like nine at bats. So I don't think it's a really fair thing to say that he's doing better than Pache. His average might be better, but you know, Pache has a lot more upside. Pache has a lot more. I think he has a lot more time to get right. I think he has more potential. I think he also costs less money and Ender's on that last leg of the contract that he's making 8 million a year. Really honestly, I think he's only going to be on the bench because he's making 8 million a year. Not the only reason. I think he'll be successful there possibly, but 
that's really the only reason they're going to give him as many chances as they're going to give him off the bench. Because, you know, if you guys remember, there was a specific instance last year, the Braves needed him to bunt and he couldn't do it. You know, I just don't know that off the bench is his spot. I don't know if he can be Charlie Culberson level off the bench performer. Uh, but I do think he's safe because it's his spot to lose at the moment. What an amazing play. That correction, Pache, today. Oh, the throw he made. Yeah, he definitely is making a case that he needs to be our opening day starter center fielder. Yeah, I agree. I, I think on, on a fielding level, Ender's lost a step. Uh, obviously, a three-time Gold Glove winner. He's he's suitable in the outfield. He could be on any major league outfield. But right now, he's got a guy younger than him, stronger than him, can hit better, and Pache. And I know his spring training numbers may be better or worse, but ultimately, Pache is going to be the better hitter if nothing else, for power. So we'll see. Uh, is Kazmar going to get a spot? I think that's up in the air there, Tyler. Uh, Kazmar is a guy that I think a lot of people have fallen in love with because he just doesn't take no for an answer. The guy's tied to the Cunha for the most homers in Braves spring training right now with three. And he's before today he had like a 545 batting average and a 621 on base percentage. You know, So, again, it's spring training. You don't really know what's what. But every time I get notifications on my phone from the Braves, it seems to have Sean Kazmar's name on it. I don't know if he's going to get a spot. I don't know where he would fit in. Uh, he's making a case to be on the bench. We talk about that in the deep dive. Go check it out if you want more information on it. But I, I think it's – Kazmar is a guy that I, I think could uh, could get picked up by another team or you know he's a guy that could have an appearance for the Braves. I, I really don't know. That's ultimately up to Brian Snicker and Alex Anthopoulos. So – all seriousness, uh, talk about our young prospect, Mike, out of Atlanta, Marquise Grissom trained. Yeah, I just talked about that. You know, I interviewed Marquise Grissom a few years ago. Marquise Grissom, his son, is actually playing for Georgia Tech. I talked to him a good bit on Instagram. Uh, Marquise Grissom Jr., uh, and he's hitting mid-90s, I believe, uh, as a pitcher. So, ultimately, look, Marquise Grissom could hit, too. I think you guys forget that. Uh, Marquise Grissom was not just the guy – I got a picture over there. He wasn't just the guy catching the last out of the World Series. Marquise Grissom, go look at the stats in the 95 World Series. The most offensive producer was Marquise Grissom. Okay, so the guy can hit. I think we forget about that a lot. He didn't have a ton of time with the Braves necessarily, but the guy could hit, and the guy I think could be a good coach. Obviously, he's proven that. You're seeing that with guys like Michael Harris. And frankly, like his son, too. So we'll see what happens. You know, he works with Marvin Freeman. I think he even works with Johnny Estrada, who, by the way, I interviewed this past week. You guys should go check out the video. Uh, you should, guys, you guys really should go check out the video. It's a good interview. But I think that he's working with, you know, the, the right players. You know, he's pushing the players the way he should be doing. And Michael Harris is the first result of that. Hopefully, maybe the Braves will hire him as a uh, boot camp instructor. We do have another topic to talk about here later on. I'm going to wait on that to try to give you guys as much content as I can and talk to you as much as I can. Uh, let me see. Tyler Kazmar is so old and so unproven. He's 36. He hasn't played in the majors in over 13 years. This is probably his peak. Shit in the brave strike while the iron is hot and try to trade him. Well, that's what you just – read what you just said, right? He's 36. He hasn't played in the majors in over 13 years. This is probably his peak. Shouldn't the Braves strike while the iron is hot try to trade him? Is the iron that hot, though? What are you going to get for him? Because teams are smart. You know, you're smart in trying to trade him. I get that. But teams are smart, too. Other teams are smart. No one's going to take a guy who's 36, hasn't played in the majors in 13 years, and give you anything of value. You might get you know, something that you don't want, but you're not going to get anything of value. Uh, it, it, he's just not that type of player. People want prospect when they trade with the Braves. They don't want a guy, like I said, that's 36. Am I rooting for Kazmar? A little bit, but you got to respect his game right now. I think, uh, you know, this is a similar situation, not quite to the extreme that Kazmar is, but Tyler Matzik was a guy that hadn't been in the majors in a few years comes back and does what he does last year as a reliever. So I'm not saying it's going to happen. I think it's a very – it would surprise me if he made the opening day roster. But, look, if he forces his way in, who am I? Who are you to tell him no? Uh, you know, Brian Snickers, the guy that has to do that, not me. Thank goodness. Uh, Michael Harris will get called. That's from internal sources. What sources? Because I don't have those sources. You need to give me those sources. 
Uh, look, you know, it, Michael Harris is a guy that I, I think they're going to do the right way. I think they're going to give him as much time in the minors as possible. They don't want to, as much as he's hot right now, they don't want to call him up too early. So he, he's a young kid. He's only like 20, I think. So look, again, who am I to tell him no? But it's interesting to see. It's interesting to see him doing so well. Uh, double A signs catchers, they don't develop catchers. They got it or they don't. Uh, I disagree. I, th- I think that uh, the catchers right now are all pretty much internal. William Contreras is a the guy they developed from the ground up. Shay Lingaliers is a the guy they drafted a couple years ago. You know, and Darno's the guy they signed. Uh, so I think it's surprising to see uh, th- them sticking with their guns and not trading these guys. And I wouldn't even say it's surprising. It's a good thing to see. Um, but at the end of the day, I really think that the Braves catching – I think the catching position has some of the most depth on the team. Uh, and I mean that with all due respect to every other part of the team. You got a guy like Darno who had the year he had last year. And then you got William Contreras, who, by the way, his brother's Wilson Contreras. I'm not trying to link the two. However, uh, it runs in a family, uh, you know, to some degree. Langoliers, who by all accounts is doing very well. So, I think it's a matter of time before you see those guys. Before we move any further, guys, one reminder, like this video. Get it out there. It really helps me out. I try to put a lot of content out for you guys. It really helps me out when you like the video. Thank you. Uh, Tyler, do you think the rumors are true that the Braves – oh, I already answered that question. Get out of here. Hi. Let me see. Let me see. Hi. Truly think that we are going to fill the empty open slots with some of the guys that are not – on starting rotation right now for the Braves. You must be referring to the bullpen. We've talked a lot about the bullpen. And, yeah, I that's why I think Shane Green's not necessarily a priority for the Braves. And as much as I want Shane Green back or wanted Shane Green back and would still like to have him back, when you have guys that are pushing, you know, to be in the starting rotation and are not going to have a spot necessarily, like Kyle Wright, Bryce Wilson, those guys can go to the bullpen, and there's nothing wrong with that. So, We'll see. Um, I don't know. I really think that uh, the bullpen is not my biggest concern. My my biggest concern at, at the moment, I don't really have questions. My biggest concern is that bench. Who's going to be successful? And I don't even think it's that big of like, a, oh, my goodness, what are we going to do? It's more of a what are the Braves going to choose to do? It, it's not a worry as much as it is a curiosity. So it, I think it's going to be interesting to see how it develops. Braves can't afford having Jackson and Anderson, Pache and Contreras are better options. Yeah, you know, uh, Alex Jackson, obviously, look, Alex Jackson, I watched him uh, in the bullpen warming up for a game, you know, the other day. And, look, Alex Jackson is nothing if not suitable, okay? He's good behind the plate. He's good enough to be in the batter's box. I just don't think he's the best option in the batter's box. And that's what I think is going to, you know, frankly – eventually get him out of the catching position for the Braves. But ultimately I would add, you know, I talked to Johnny Estrada the other day, Johnny Estrada said, and I really like this quote, you know, he said when he was coming up, his catching was going to get in there, right? That's what has happened to Alex Jackson. But Estrada went on to say, your hitting is going to keep you there. I just don't know that his hitting can keep him there. He may start opening day. I would prefer to see Contreras. If that's the guy we're going to go with, I would prefer to see him have a month working under Darno and Sal Fasano. So it'll be interesting to see, but I think it'll be good for him. And if nothing else, to go to the alternative training site, have a month to work out and get right. But ultimately I'd really like to see him start, you know, on the opening day roster. So uh, let me see. Um, yeah. Hey, Seuss, I hear you. I already kind of mentioned that, but I'll mention it again for you. The, uh, the Braves have released what they're going to do for opening day. It's going to be 33% of the stadium. Of course, you already know, modified seating, mass mandatory, social distancing, enhanced sanitation, no bags to be allowed at Truist Park unless essentials. Yeah, that's how it was at spring training. That's how it was at uh, when I went to Globe Life Field in Texas for the Dodgers Braves. Uh, you know, that that's how it's going to be. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you, it does, as a fan, uh, it does get old. At a certain point when you're walking around the stadium uh, and you're wearing a mask, you know, I had a crazy tan line the other day that you all got to, you know, witness. 
Uh, once you're sitting down, you don't have to wear a mask. I don't believe, I don't know how it's going to be at Truist Park, but that's how it was at spring training. And you're in an outdoor environment, you're social distance anyway, but it's an interesting way of life at the moment, especially going to a public event like that. Um, I, I, you know, I really think that ultimately it's live baseball, whether you're watching it on TV, whether you're watching it at the park, it's live baseball. I had a great time at spring training, regardless of the precautions, you know, you couldn't stand on the rail. You couldn't, you know, walk around without a mask, you could, things like that. Contactless payment. It's hard to sort of escape real life with that, but at the end of the day, it's what we have right now. It's what we're going to have. So hopefully we'll be able to all to attend Truist Park under normal situation by the end of the year. Hey, Tyler, who do you think are the top five duos players at the MLB level? Um, duos? I don't know if you mean like pitcher or catcher. Uh, I think – if I had to pick a pitcher and a catcher, the guys that have been really good over, you know, just a number of years are Yadier Molina, Adam Wainwright. You know, the, the, there was talk about bringing them to the Braves this year. Uh, I, I think those two have been, you know, really good for a long time. Uh, but other than that, you know, I, I don't know what you mean by duos exactly. Uh, I don't know if you mean batteries or if you mean just duos in general. But sorry, I can't really answer your question there. Tyler, do you think our bullpen is too lefty heavy? It seems like Chris Martin is the only righty. I really trust, and he seems to get injured out of nowhere. If Martin goes down, I don't trust any righty. Yeah, uh, Will Smith is a righty, though, I believe. Uh, I, I do think it's a little lefty heavy. That's not necessarily anything they can control. But also, if you are going with the idea that Kyle Wright and Bryce Wilson are going to be in your bullpen, in theory, they're too talented to not be somewhere, they're both righties. So. I'm not saying that it that if Chris Martin was to go down, I would feel comfortable. I certainly wouldn't, but we'll see. Not to mention the lefty righty thing. I don't know if it has that you know as big of a deal as it did a couple of years ago because you don't have specialists anymore. You have to come in and pitch to three batters nonetheless. So you're going to face lefty and righties. Does it help if you have an equal amount? Probably, but we'll see. Um, I think that ultimately, if Chris Martin was to go down, the Braves would have to make a move. But hopefully that doesn't happen. Uh, he had a really good day today, though, seven innings – or one inning, seven pitches. So he had a really good day today. So hopefully that will uh, stay and be the case. But uh, we are going to move on. I do have one more segment to talk about before we talk about autograph of the day. Uh, we're going to talk about Marcel Ozuna. Uh, you know, there's some talk about his lack of offense. Uh, so far in spring training, 0-13 in his last 13 at-bats. He leads the team in strikeouts before today. In total, to, before today, he was 2-16. And, and I so, I know some of you aren't going to like what I'm about to say. I'm about to – yeah, I hear you there, Mad Mab. I hear you there. Uh, so there's some talk about his lack of offense, right? 2-16 and 16 so far before today in spring training. And I know, like I said, I know some of you aren't going to like what I'm about to say, but I'm not really worried about it. Uh I saw him take a strikeout looking last week in person. I groaned a little bit. I was a little aggravated. Uh, but I also have a little bit more proficient memory than a lot of Braves fans do. Uh, it's just how it is. I remember last year, I wish I could play the clip for you, but I remember last year, right around July 14th, uh, during summer camp last year, he was 2-24 and 24 in spring training before summer camp. And it wasn't until around July 14th that he started actually producing. So two and 24 last year in spring training. That's worse than the two and 16 so far in spring training. Uh, it may be it may be that he heats up midseason. It may be that he heats up on opening day. I am not concerned about his numbers in March. I'm concerned about his numbers in April. So until he is a problem, <laughs> I'm not worried about Marcelo Zuna. Uh, this is not something I'm worried about at all. I don't think Ozuna is all of a sudden going to fall off and be, you know, and get his money and go home. I don't think that's what's happening here. I think he's just got to get back into the group. Ultimately, I think it's the first time he's seen major league pitching in four or five months. So give him more time before you worry. Uh, we got one more thing to talk about. I was going to make this the autograph of the day, but I changed my mind. We're going to make it its own segment. Nick Markakis. Uh, Nick Markakis has elected to retire after 15 seasons. A lot of talk about this lately, and rightfully so. A lot of guys posted on Instagram. Freddie Freeman had a really nice post. Mike Soroka had a really nice post. And 
you know, Brian Snicker spoke about him a good bit, but you know, this is a guy that broke into the league with the Orioles and, you know, Baltimore loved him. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys knew that Baltimore loved Mark Hakus. He then joined the Braves in 2015 and, you know, you guys and I have seen him be just a consummate professional sense. And that's why that's what Snicker called him anyway, but that's why, you know, I really liked him as a player Uh, over the past few years, questions arose as, to when his role on the Braves would eventually end. And I would say that no one was truly waiting on the day that it would. Uh, I don't think anyone was really hoping that Mark Hakus wouldn't be around. I honestly think that, you know, if they had signed Mark Hakus this year and, you know, that, that came out, um, none of you would be upset about it. But well, okay. You know, it's nice to have Nick around still. And I think that's the best compliment you can give. You know, he's a, he was a good enough hitter to keep on any lineup. Um, I don't think he, he more than likely didn't get an offer, you know, that, that would have fit him. You know, obviously he didn't get one from the Braves and, you know, I don't, you know, he might've got one from like the Mariners, but who wants to travel all the way to Seattle, for example. But, you know, the guy took payouts to stay with Atlanta. He took pay cuts. And, you know, after opting out last season, he couldn't stay at home away from his teammates and he opted back in and boy, was I glad he did. In his final year, he hit one homer. Yes, just one, six, you know, and it was his first game starting after opting back in, and it was a walk off, the final home run of his career in dramatic fashion. And for a guy who has always stayed a bit under the radar, what a way to finish, you know. And steady presence in the clubhouse, he always demanded respect, not for himself, for others. Uh, we've heard some stories about that this week. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just go look it up. It's a pretty interesting read. But uh, he was a team guy that always shines pretty brightly. 15 years, career 288 batting average, all-star in 2018 with the Braves, three-time Gold Glove, and he has a silver slugger to his name. You know, Nick Markakis has earned his retirement. What, you know, just a what a career. And, you know, even though none of us wanted to see it just yet, I would have loved to have seen him go on to World Series last year. Ultimately, look, man, I really enjoyed watching the last few years of his career. He's been a guy that – You know, if nothing else, he's going to give you a good at bat. And that is what it is. But we are going to wrap it up here with autograph of the day. And I think what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go get one of those helmets behind me is what I'm going to do. I'm going to get this one right here. So growing up, I was a Florida State fan. Um, It's a tough thing to say these days, but I was a Florida State fan growing up. Yeah, I, I would still classify, you know, I still want the program to do well, but it's hard to watch these days. But the guy that was leading the charge, you know, when Florida State really had its success, you know, three national championships, things like that, was Bobby Bowden. My dad loved Bobby Bowden, hence why we like Florida State. But as you can see, this helmet, you already know who it's signed by. It's signed by Bobby Bowden. Two Tyler, go Knowles, Bobby Bowden. So I interviewed Bobby, uh, I guess, two years ago now. And just a super nice guy. If you don't know who Bobby Bowden is, I know we're a baseball channel and I'm talking football right now, but if you don't know who Bobby Bowden is, he's he's worth a look up. Very, you know, everything you see about him, it's just he's a good Christian man. He's very humble, and he was everything that I thought he was uh, to me personally. Uh, he signed helmet for me, signed one for my brother in there, uh, you know, and obviously I had him put two Tyler on it because this thing's going to sit on my desk for forever more. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's just a – obviously, it's a full-size helmet. It's a really cool desk piece. I got some more back there of some other coaches I've met and interviewed. But, you know, none of them were quite as cool as Bobby Bowden. And I got to take my dad to meet him, which is just a really cool experience. So that's the autograph of the day for today. Uh, We are going to wrap it up with that. And, uh, yeah, Deion Sanders, what a a memory, right? We are going to wrap it up with that, guys. I'm really sorry about the technical difficulties. Can't help it. The internet works in mysterious ways. I can't help it, but uh, hopefully we'll get them all right before Thursday. Thursday, 8 p.m., another live show. Hopefully we'll have some more updates, some positive updates, and, uh, you know, we'll get through and get to the regular season. So that'll be sooner rather than later, I really believe it. But before you go, one last time, go check out Lorandi Gloves right here. Lorandi Gloves, our link is in the description. Also, go check out the latest video I just dropped, really focusing on on the Braves bench battle. That's a really good watch. If you want to bend some on that content, go watch that. It's a really good thing to see. So 
we are going to get out of here on that note. Again, like this video, subscribe to this channel, share it with your friends, tell them about the channel, tell them they need to be updated with the Braves, tell them to check right here at On Deck. So with that, we are going to get out of here. Make sure that you're here Thursday night. Should be a pretty good one, and uh, hopefully we'll see. Also, hey, before I go, go check out the interview with Johnny Estrada. Really good talking points. We've, I mean, we're talking – he gave us hitting lessons. He gave us catching lessons. He had some really good topics to talk about in Braves history. His 04 All-Star game, behind the scenes, a memory with Randy Johnson, all kinds of stuff. Just go watch it. I promise it'll be worth your time. So with that, guys, we are going to hop out of here. Thank you guys so much for being active in the chat. really makes my life a lot easier. Thank you guys for liking the video. really makes my life a lot easier. Appreciate it, guys. Y'all be good.